Let's say that our main task of the day is to go grocery shopping. And if we wanted to break this task down into three individual jobs or steps, one would be take inventory of the current stash of food that we have. Two would be create a list of the new food that we need to buy. And then three, actually go out and buy our groceries. In this scenario, we can also say that the output of step one, that inventory is needed for step two, which is to create the list then that we need. And the output of that list itself is absolutely needed for job three, which is buying the food. In a nutshell, this is essentially how outputs work in GitHub Actions. With outputs, we can design our workflows to pass information from one job to the other by simply just updating some configurations. So among other things, really the benefit of outputs is it makes your workflow files much more dynamic. You can run scripts in one job that might generate some data or create a file and then pass that information along into a following job in a very controlled way. Think about our grocery shopping example, but instead of it being jobs to you know, ultimately go grocery shopping, these jobs or steps would be for releasing code or deploying a new data model. Now, when it comes to actually setting these outputs, we'll obviously we'll walk through an example, but the two places where you'll primarily set them will be one on the job level and two on the entire workflow. We take a look here when setting it on a job level, you'll set it, like we said, within the job, there'll be an output section here where we'll declare. And again, we're going to walk through this and go over some examples of this. And then ultimately, when you want to use them in a future job, you'll use this needs context here. And this is how you would pass it along to a following job. Alternatively, with the on workflow calls, you can set that for a workflow. And then this will allow you to use these outputs throughout the workflow. It's not necessarily just with the dependent needs context. All right. So now that we have a basic understanding of what outputs actually are, let's hop over to our GitHub, create a workflow file and see how this looks. So here we are in GitHub now, and what I'll do, we're gonna add a workflow file ultimately, uh, but what I'll do is go to actions, and I'm just going to create a new workflow from scratch to show us how this works. Here's the basic layout. We've seen this before in other videos if you watched the other ones on GitHub Actions. So I'll just clean this up real quick. All right, so I've gone through and deleted a lot of the notes and basic uh, default comments here. We'll change this, we'll call this outputs demo. And what we'll do here for jobs, I'm going to take the example here that we looked at before. And we'll start with this, just to keep it simple. Okay. So what we have here now to level set us here is we have a, a workflow file called outputs demo, we have it on workflow dispatch, meaning we can just manually trigger this, that's the only way it's going to work. And we have two jobs, I'm actually going to remove the second job just so we can start first with understanding how outputs are set and how we call them. So as it says here, again, we're working in our first job. Here is where we can see we actually declare our outputs for a particular job. In this case, we're saying two outputs uh, and here are the values. So let's, let's walk through this uh, by each component. So again, outputs under the job, we're giving it a name. In this case, we're calling it output one, or you could have called this whatever you want. And this is important because this is how it will be referred to later from, you know, in the future jobs, it will refer to it this way. Uh, and then in here, it gives you this syntax. You, I mean, I suggest just copying and pasting to start and then you fill it in uh, with what you need. But what this is saying is the value for, let's say output one, it's going to look for an ID of step one. So in this case, ID of step one is right here. It's going to look for an output with the name of test. So we haven't, I'm just going to delete this just to be even more specific. To understand this, we need to understand the second part, which is how to actually set outputs. And the way that you do that is as it shows here, you will have first you need to give your step an ID, you'll have a run step and write echo. And in the parentheses, two colons, set output. So you need to start it with this, the name here, name equals, here's where you're declaring which 
output you're actually giving a value to here. So in this case, it's test. We're saying we want to give the output test two more colons and then a value. In this scenario, we're actually hard coding that value to just be hello. So all this to say, this is going to be replaced with this. And then in subsequent jobs, if it called output one, we would see hello. Now let's bring back the other one. And now we're saying we're setting output two. We're looking for a step ID of two and an output called test as well. And in this case, we're giving it the value of world. And the only reason these are different now is because they're, it's coming from two different steps, the different IDs. So it can interpret that they're two different uh, things that we're looking at. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let's start here and commit this right to main for the sake of simplicity. Change this, start this commit, and we will go ahead and run this workflow. We can see it's running. Let's hop in here. We have our one job and here we can see that's all it did. It just ran, it set that value uh, and successfully. So really in this case, it didn't really add a whole lot of value for us, but we didn't get any failures. So we know that we were able to successfully set them. So our syntax in that regard uh, is correct. So let's go back in now and add back that second job and try to call this output and bring it into the next job. So we will copy this. So now let's let's take a look at this again. Now we're saying job two. So now imagine we are in a second job. We have needs job one. We covered this in another video, but essentially this is saying that this job can't start until this one finishes. So we're saying run job one, job two. Now we're echoing the values of the outputs here. And the way that this syntax works is needs. And we're gonna say needs job one, outputs output one. And again, this is where I mentioned this name right here comes into play because this is how we refer to it in the next job. Output one, output two, if we called this something else, output whatever, this is how we would call it here. These need to match. So now we'll commit this and run it and it'll prove to us that we can one, set a value in one completely different job and get that information in the next one. Now we have our two jobs. This should set our outputs and then we should be able to see it in job two and we'll, we'll know it's successful if it prints out to us, hello world, because that means it got that information Okay, here we go, run, echo, hello world. So that means that it successfully got that information from the previous job because we didn't set that information at all in job two, that all came from job one. So all good there. All right, so now let's step it up a little bit more now and let's, let's add a third output. Let's just, let's try something new here. What we'll do is we'll add a third output. So let's call this output three. Again, this could be called whatever you want and we'll copy this, just we'll do a step three because let's say we're gonna add a, another step, we'll add a step three. And this time, instead of calling the outputs test, let's call it a tag name. You know, again, doesn't matter. I just wanna give it something different than the previous ones that we've had. So now let's go ahead and copy this. Again, you could, you could actually set these in all in one step if you wanted, but we won't. So we have ID of step three that gives this step an individual identifier and we can call it here. We're gonna set an output, a name, but this time the name is tag name. And what I wanna do now is instead of hard coding this, let's try something different. Let's try to set a variable and then pass that variable information as the tag name. Maybe there's something you did that uh, would require that. So what we'll do is we'll put this on two lines, the first line will set the variable, and then in the second one, when we set the output, we'll use that in here. So let's let's say the name of the variable is tag bar equals test one, two, three, four, five. And so this is how you set a variable in uh, the bash terminal here. And what we'll do is instead of world, dollar sign, tag bar. So what this is going to do now is give the output three the value of 
tag name in step three, which is coming from this variable. So adding a little bit more complexity here, but let's give this a shot. And here we can see uh, I ran it. Oh, you know what? What I wanted to do was actually pass this along. So I'm going to go through real quick and update the script so that we can pass it and see it come through. So I'm going to add it here as well. Sorry about that. So that way we can see that this too also gets passed all the way through. Okay. Job one, everything is set. Job two, echo hello world, test one, two, three, four, five. So again, just proving that the variable was set, it was passed through as an output, and we can access it now in the next job. So the last thing we'll do here is take it one more step. And instead of just setting a variable and passing that, what we'll do is something a little more complicated and create a file with some information in one step, and then pass that information as the output. Imagine you have some custom logic script that you need to run, and then you take that output, use feed that into something else in the next step, and you can get this really pretty intense workflow going on. But we'll start obviously with uh, the basics here. And what I'm going to do is just create a new workflow file and keep this separate. I'm going to delete this and just copy something that I have. And, and we'll walk through what I have. So in this case, we'll call it outputs demo two. this is also going to be on a dispatch, only one output. But now the steps are a little bit different. Instead of just hard coding these um, outputs, we're going to do something else. So what we're going to do is check out our branch. We're going to install Python. And then we're going to run a custom Python script that we'll have created. I'll add this file before we run it. But what it's going to do is one, run this Python script. And again, that Python script is going to create a text file. And that text file is going to be called readme.txt. What we're doing here is setting a variable with the output of that file. And then we're setting, I should, I should be careful with my words here, with the contents of that file. It's going to use the cat function to read it. And then we're going to set the output, which we're calling data here. It's looking for data with the contents of this file. And contents here again is because that's what we're calling this variable. All of this here will be placed in output one. And then in job two, we will read out the values of that output. Okay, following. So we'll go ahead and start that commit. I'll just commit this one to the branch and then once again, and then I'll go ahead and uh, add that file that we need. So what I'm going to do here is go back to our full code base, create a new file, create txt file.py. And all we're going to do, it's just going to look like this. It's going to open and create a new file called readme.txt. And it says, this info is coming from a file. And you know, we could put whatever we want in here. But just for the sake of example, to show that we can run some other processes, create a file, grab some information from a file, and then pass that along uh, as an output. So we have this here, I actually added this a couple days ago, so I didn't need to save it. Um, but let's go to actions now. And now run outputs demo two, and let's see if we can bring this whole thing home. All right, so it's checking out. It's well, very quick, set up Python, it ran the Python script to create that file. And check that out. Now let's go to job two. And here we go. Okay, it echoed this info is coming from a file, meaning it was able to read that file and display it. And so we were able to pass that information along from one job to another. And you can start to think of all of the different scenarios where this might come into play. So if you've made it this far, hopefully now you have a better understanding of how outputs work in GitHub and GitHub Actions. It can start to implement them in your projects uh, as well. So thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.